listening to L.A. Talk Radio. You're listening to the Sheena Metal Experience with your host, Sheena Metal, right here on L.A. Talk Radio. That's right. It's the Sheena Metal Experience right here on L.A. Talk Radio. For more info on the show, latalkradio.com, sheenametalexperience.com. Don't forget to email me and let me know what you think of the show. If you're looking for me online, it couldn't be easier. I'm just at Sheena Metal everywhere on social media. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one. If anyone has found another Sheena Metal, I would love to know about it. But so far, I think I'm I'm the only one. I'm the one that's this face is going to pop up when you type in Sheena Metal for better or for worse. Um, I'm also the founder of a wonderful movement of peace, love, kindness, and unity at IamRaisingTheVibration.com and at RaisingTheVibration.org. I'm so honored to have everyone that's involved in it, our wonderful advisory board, my fantastic Vibration Council, um, the wonder, our wonderful vibration partners, the wonderful people that, that make it all be what it is. And I'm so appreciative um, for everyone for being involved. It's a lot of where my heart is and a lot of the love and teachings of my mom and uh, found it in her honor. I also have a fantastic spiritual practice at IamRaisingYourVibration.com and at SheenaMetalSpiritual.com. I would love for you to go there, take part in that. I'm always available for private sessions. I do free readings here uh, tw- two times a week on LA Talk Radio. I do one to two live broadcasts from home a week where I do free readings. Um, I'm always doing things in different places. I do a Thursday um, free reading thing in uh, Belmont Shores. I, I do uh, in the Long Beach area. I do all kinds of stuff. So um, the most exciting thing is that this week I'm teaching a class, a webinar. So no matter where you are in the world, you can take it. You go to whydoifeeleverything.com. It's a webinar for empaths facilitated by my dear friend Joy Koff at her wonderful metaphysical center in the Dallas area, which is called Miracles of Joy. And Joy is one of those people who has sort of taken me under her wing as I, you know, am a, a, a new at talking about being a psychic, new at actually opening a practice, not new at doing it, but new at using it the way that I do and have the last couple of years. Another person who's been, and Joy was my guest today on Haunted Playground uh, from 2 to 12 to 2 p.m. Pacific on uh, LA Talk Radio. Another person who has been wonderful about that is my guest today, the wonderful uh, Belle Salisbury from Bell Esprit Magazine and Psychic Lighthouse, the Reverend Belle Salisbury. Um, I am the Reverend Sheena Metal. We are reverends. I love that. We are reverends with reverence. Um, I am so honored to have Belle as a friend and she has been so wonderful in sort of my own coming out process as a psychic medium and intuitive and empath and really starting to use my gifts to help the world. And, um, I couldn't be more thankful to have her in my life or, uh, to have her here as a guest today. She's wonderful. We're going to get her on the phone right now. And I'm so thankful to her for her kindness and everybody in my life who has taken me under their wing, my wonderful friend, Patty Negri, and just sort of nurtured me along this path of what do I do now? Because as much as my mother, I think, wanted to nurture me down this path, it wasn't something that I really knew it was time to do until after she was gone. And you know how they say that it, it, when one door closes, another door opens, and the universe always brings you what you need. Um, my best friend, L.A. Weiss, another person who's mentored me through this. So as I lost my mother and thought I lost her guidance forever. All these wonderful, strong, beautiful women have come into my life that have brought that same kind of maternal and and wise guidance. And uh, I call them my owls. Um, I think my best friend, LA, is my my biggest owl. The owl, I call her. I call and go, hey, owl, I need something. I need some advice, owl. Um, But of course, Belle Salisbury, too, has been so wonderful at helping me along this journey. And she's here with us. How are you, my friend? Hi, sweetheart. I'm good. Thanks. Appreciate being on this show. I love you. having you. I just gave you a glowing intro and thanked you for being somebody who's helped me through this kind of coming out as a psychic medium and, and using my gifts. So you were such an essential part of that. And I'm so thankful to you. Oh, well, thank you so much. I'm always grateful to be able to help others along their journey. Well, and isn't that what it's all about, right? It's about 
that I love that sending the elevator down idea. Though God, I hate elevators, but you know the idea of sending the escalator down <laughs> and bringing some people up. I like that a lot better than the than the elevator. Yeah, if you don't like the elevator, use the stairs. <laughs> exactly. I use a lot of stairs. Let me tell you something. My body might not be that great, but I've got the calves of a twenty five year old because I use those stairs. <laughs> The, the one part of my body I can show off to everybody naked and be like, look at these, look at these. Uh, yeah. Okay, If you want to get on the air with us today and you'd like a free psychic reading, uh, uh, healing, energetic, some spiritual counseling, you want to ask a psychic question, a paranormal question, um, we are here for you. That's why we're here today. So text us and we will get you on. And I believe we're going to get Nicole on first. And, um, and then... Um, I uh, got everybody lined up here, so we gotta we yeah, gotta get it all yeah. figured out. So uh, Nicole, and then um, the next one is uh, I don't know. Let's get Nicole in. So what's new with you? What's new with Psychic Lighthouse? What's new with Bella Spree? What's on? What's in new in your world, my friend? Well, you know, I was gone previously, uh, June and July. Uh, actually, May parts of May, June, and July. Um, up on tour up north, and uh, I've been home about four weeks now, so roughly a month now, and uh, playing catch up. Um, I always love my my northern uh, clients; they're just wonderful, wonderful folks. Yeah. And I've been um, as far as Bella Spree goes, we're giving it an absolutely complete new facelift, and uh, that's what I've been working on since May, before I left to go on tour, and since I've been home. So we're going to be launching that sometime, hopefully this week, once I'm finished transferring all the old articles over. And um, wow, it's going to be amazing. We're going to relaunch the site and uh, hope to hear from folks who would like to submit articles to the blog because it's now a blog. It's no longer a magazine. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. What, what, what is the difference, though? A, a magazine is a blog, isn't it? I mean, do we even know it the is. difference anymore? It is. Well, when I called it a magazine, I was actually um, creating a flip page magazine that was an online magazine. And, of course, Bella Spree is free for anybody that wishes to read it. Um, but it, uh, it, I was creating a flip page magazine that really looked like a virtual magazine. But that was taking so long to create that um, by the time I got one finished, it was time to start the next one. So I didn't have time to do other things that I needed to do. So um, I quit making the actual flip pages with InDesign and decided to just turn it into a, a, a blog site. And it's been going strong since uh, January of 2012. Wow. And so I just, figured, you know, yeah. So I just figured it needed a new facelift, new logo. So um, once we get it launched, it's going to be gorgeous. So wonderful. It's, it's so well, it exciting. Is, yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that uh, that's wonderful? I'm so. so now, proud. is there a, is there a link that we can share for folks to be able to listen in? I'm, I'm doing it what right do now. To... I'm going to get it everywhere while we take first. our first caller. So we're actually going to get Michelle up first, and while Michelle is with okay. us, I'm going to put that link everywhere like magic. But I like awesome how you thought. I like how you keep me on my toes, my friend. I do appreciate that. You're like, <laughs> hey Sheena, put up the link with the well, right date, you turd. Just yeah, I, you know. Just go ahead and say it. You're a nag, Bell. Just keep nagging. You know what? No, it gets real busy here in Sheena Land. So sometimes I need a nice <laughs> reminder, and I appreciate everybody who helps me out with that. So we're going to get Michelle on with you, and um, I'm going to do a little Skype magic here, and we're going to make this work, and then we are going to get Michelle. And then Nicole's going to be next, I think. And I, and you know my, you know my phone went swimming, right? Do you know that story? Yes, I heard about that. My phone went swimming, and I lost all my contacts. They think now the latest is they may be able to recover the data. I don't want to tell you how much it's going to cost because it'll make you cry, and you're a nice lady. But, oh, no. but you know what? The amount oh. of work that it would take me to recreate the data, it's it's absolutely well oh. worth it. And it's But it was the strangest thing. I was at my pool. And I had my little iPhone SE in its little folio case. It's leather folio. And I dropped it maybe two and a half inches. I was going to take a client. And I, um, I, had, I had kind of a weird thing happen. I, was, I, was, um, I had an electrolyte deficiency that made me kind of funky. And it was the next day and I was yeah, still kind yeah. of funky. And I was very overheated. So I was going to put my, my feet in the pool and call my client. 
and I dropped the phone onto the chair by the pool like two and a half inches. The thing bounced, flew up over my head, Bell, and went into the pool. I mean, if, if, if that's not Mercury well, retrograde, I mean, the thing was a free diver. I mean, that's such a Mercury retrograde thing, right? Where just the weirdest thing will happen. And then yes, I did everything yes. they told me to do. I, I turned it off. I put it in the rice. I babied it. I took it everywhere. They tried to suck the water out of it at the Verizon store. And it just is dead. But now they say that the... That the Hello? Little, hi, Michelle. The little hard disk place might, might actually... The little hard disk area might be saved. So, yay, let's pray for my cell phone. Oh, That's I, I, the douchiest thing I've ever I said. So. Uh, Michelle, I welcome so. to the show. How are you? Say hi to <laughs> Belle. And how may we help you, sweetheart? I'm doing well. How are you guys? So we're doing fantastic. Doing it's great to hear from you. Yes, you too. Uh, so what's on your mind? What, what what can we help you with? Well, I am just, I actually just recently got divorced. Okay. And I'm just kind of in a funk. You okay. know what I mean? I'm just wondering if it's always going to end up being such a struggle. You know what I mean? Like I do. I do. Financially and that kind of thing. <laughs> I do. I understand. Yeah. I do. Belle, why don't you start this one? Because you're my guest, sweetheart. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, Michelle. Um, you know, the, hi. The, first thing, <laughs> the first thing that your guide said was, congratulations. Yeah. It's about time. <laughs> absolutely. For me, too. I didn't want to yeah. say that, but yeah, absolutely. The absolutely. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Yippee. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, so this, is, this had actually been brewing for about four years, Spirit says. And, uh, and it just took, um, I, I don't, I, I'm not sure if this was a mutually agreed thing or something that you knew was coming and, and, you know, ending yeah. never fun, you know, it's, it's sort of, um, uh, it's an end of a chapter and it's yeah. always how you feel when you get to the end of the book, you're like, well, dang, I want some more. And so you're just starting a new book, you know, you're starting a whole new, um, life pattern for you. Um, you've changed a lot right. just in the last three months. I mean, it's been like yes. Zoom, you know, and so much has changed and so much has has um, altered your frame of mind. And so Spirit states this, it's important to honor your emotions. Mm. And so if you're feeling funky, if you're feeling a little sad, honor that because it's okay, mm -hmm. you know, because that's how we heal when we suppress our feelings, then they don't heal, do they? Mm. Right. That's true. You know, it makes sense, right? If we have to honor those emotions, and um, certainly that means honor, not wallow, okay? But, Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, but to, it, it's about changing the mindset. And I really feel, Michelle, that you're okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I really do yeah. feel that you're okay. I just feel like you're, you know, you're still kind of numb, you know, um, the, the ending, the finality, I think that's, that's what's been bugging you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so let's just add one more little bit of flavor for you. And that <laughs> is that <laughs> life does go on. Um, I, I get the feeling either that you have your eyes on someone or there is someone or there's someone right around the corner. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't mean that you're ready to jump right in. It simply means right. that um, it feels good to know that somebody else desires you. Yeah. And right. so you're not going to be lacking in male attention, you know, or partnership attention, okay? Um, you're going to be able to pick and choose, although Spirit does state that you're not going to be in any big hurry to... Um, jump into a commitment type of relationship yeah. because you kind of want oh, to stay absolutely. the field. Yeah, I agree. You, know, you just kind of want to see what's out there. A absolutely true. Right. Yeah. And, you know, there's a yeah. reason why they call them growing pains. I mean, human beings, mm -hmm. we're sedentary creatures, and we do not like change. And I think that there is something about change that's terrifying. And I also think that from a, mm -hmm. a sociological standpoint, a cultural standpoint, we are taught to partner forever. So when we when we're in a situation where we get into especially something like a long term commitment or a marriage, we're expecting it to last forever. And when it doesn't, there's a terrible feeling of letdown, like somehow we failed. And energetically and universally, that is not a failure at all. No matter how much time you spend with someone, 
that's the allotted time that you were supposed to spend with that person and at, for your growth mm-hmm. and for your lesson, right? But I think uh, from a three-dimensional right. human standpoint, we say, oh, God, that's, mm, it let down. Mm, is this a let, did I let, did I let myself down? Did I let this person down? Did I let the universe down? Did I let all my friends and family down? This was supposed to be this, and we stood here, and we did this, and we said it was going to be forever, and now look at this. So I think a lot of what right. you're feeling is, sweetie, your, your actual happiness at being out and your spiritual knowledge that this is the best, that you're in a really good place and that you have done exactly what mm-hmm. you're supposed to do. And then just a little bit of that residual, you know, thinking from before the growth, which is like, well, mm, I don't know. Because when you said the thing in the beginning about, you know, just tell me something, I want to hear if it's ever going to not be so hard. Um Mm-hmm. it's actually easier now. It's going to be easier now than it was through a lot of that marriage. Right. Yeah. I can see yeah. that. And I am going to, I'm going to add for you too, Michelle, that around September of this year, you are coupled. Okay. So okay. Wow. <laughs> only like a couple months away. Wow. You know, and yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it feels like, and again, you're not somebody that's wanting to move quickly. You know what I'm saying? So, right. And I always, I always say to my clients, you know, be friends first. Be friends first and then let love follow. And, and you certainly abide by that. And so are we right. saying that this might possibly be someone that you know already or are reconnecting with? It's a possibility that I do feel like that by September there is that coupled relationship that's in the works. Perfect. Well, there's no no time and at all. I can all. hear it. I can, I can, I can hear it. But people are saying, "So what's going on?" And you're like, "Oh, we're just friends." And your friends are like, mm-hmm, <laughs> "Sure." You know. So when you actually come out <laughs> and announce that you're a couple, they're like, "We knew that." <laughs> you know. So, um, but it's it's going to be adorable. And and this somebody is to me, it feels totally opposite from your original taste. Because that oh thank goodness how <laughs> yeah no more yes. of that yeah it demonstrates how much you've grown and and that your tastes have changed and matured I should say yeah. so um, fly high girlfriend it, you're it's it's your perfect time. and I just want to Good. tell you how lucky you are because Belle has never told me that my life was adorable so <laughs> <laughs> you're well be- I'm glad to be the first. You're going to be the envy of everyone, of everyone's life now, because an adorable life is a good thing to have. Thank you so much for the call, sweetheart. We're thinking about you, and we want you to do well, and you've got my info. Please stay in touch and let me know how it's working out, because we want to make sure that you're okay and uh, that everything is Absolutely. is great. It's hard, you know. It's um, it's it's very hard, I think, to uh, Bell to to deal with the transition of in and out of a relationship. I don't know when the last time you did that was, but I think that was a really long time ago for you. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was a very long time ago, you know, and, and, uh, and, but you know, I, I, at first I look at them with sadness. Like I said, it's like an ending of a chapter, but then as you start to heal and as you look back on that, you're like, thank God, <laughs> you know, what was I thinking? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. So yeah. It, it, yeah. It does demonstrate the growth. Yeah. I remember when I was trying to get out of the, the super, very bad, toxic, abusive relationship that I was in. And all I wanted was to get mm-hmm. out. And right before I was almost out, there was this moment where I thought, well, wait a minute. I've put this many years into this. You know, aren't I supposed yeah, to stay in yeah. this? Isn't this what we're supposed to do? What if I never find anybody else? What if I'm alone forever? And you kind of have to literally tell those thoughts to talk to the hand, talk to the hand, <laughs> and then just say, look, yeah. if that happens, if I am alone forever, if I never partner with someone else, if this is my last relationship, so well, it's a hell of a lot better than this. Yeah. And you have to just keep walking. I but I think that's sort of part of the the test along our path. I think part of it is universal testing. I think part of it is, you know, negativity yeah. coming in and resisting the negativity. Well, you know, we're creatures of habit. You know, we, we sometimes a person is more a habit than they are a love interest. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, Very true, and and then that that fear of being alone is uh, the p- most difficult thing. Yeah, that is hard, isn't it? It's, yeah, uh, it is, and that's why you know this 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 concept of empty nesters. You know, people that their children have flown the coop, and 
now they're just left with each other and they look at <clears throat> they look at that partner and go who are you <laughs> yeah because <laughs> you know yeah. we don't have time to sit and be yeah yeah uh, so what about you because you, you've been married a really long time right what's what's the secret uh, um tolerance and patience okay you know, that's one of the big things, you know, because it's not perfect. It's never going to be perfect. Right, and, of course. You know, does he make me mad? Absolutely. Do sure. I make him mad? Oh, you bet. Oh. Regularly, okay. <laughs> you know. But um, it's about patience and it's about, you know, uh, with with my hubby, you know, we're old farts, you know, we're old people. And, and uh, but we have young hearts, I should, let me add that. But, you know, there's, there's not a day that goes by that we don't say how much we love each other. Isn't that nice? We don't leave each other's company without a kiss. Aww. Even when he goes to bed, you know, yeah. he gets up and kisses me. Can I, you've seen that when I'm doing I was just going to say, you know? even when you're on Psychic Lighthouse with me, he comes in to get his kiss, yeah. and I think that's so sweet. Yeah, you know, and, and there's times where, um, you know, he'll, he'll walk by and I'll go, ooh, nice butt. Oh. And he'll turn red. Even as long as we've been married, he'll turn red in the face. But you always catch him looking back to see right. what looks so good back there, you know. Exa- right. But you have to build their ego, and we have to, you know, focus on the ego sometimes. Make us feel, you know, beautiful, whether we are wrinkled and, and gained 50 pounds or gained 100 pounds. We still need to feel that we are wanted and attractive to our partner. Absolutely. I don't care what anybody else thinks of me, but as long as my husband thinks I'm beautiful and... um and and worth it to him then that's all that matters isn't that nice and you got to give each other a break you know my mama used to always say we've got to give each other a break and i think that's so true and i think that it's it's not about i think that sometimes people think a relationship is it has to be 24 hours of excitement all the time and it's uh and it's not you know some of my favorite times i don't have any family as you know my mom was my only family and and I'm not I'm not partnered and I don't have siblings and I don't so um my two best friends are really my family and um or my you know bunch of best friends but two of my friends in particular yeah. are really my family and my best friend and her husband have been together like 30 years and he's amazing and they adopted a little girl who's 10 and a half almost 11 and she's she's like my my uh my spirit animal and um, sometimes I'm just on the phone with them and they're just doing their family thing in the background. And L.A. will kind of put the phone down and they're sort of yelling at each other and <laughs> yelling at the kid to go pick something up and pick that up. And I, I feel kind of like the puppy in the window looking in. But I'm like, oh, this is like my family time. And it's, uh, you know, I didn't grow up with that because my parents didn't like each other. And my father was a very solitary person because, you know, nobody really wanted to be around him. And my mother was naturally very introverted because she was so empathic and she kind of hid from the world. So, but, but you're right. Every single night he'll come over, even if we're on the phone, he'll come over and say goodnight and kiss her goodnight. And then I always like said, and she'll say, and then I'm always like, I love you. Good night to him. Cause he's my brother. You know, I don't, I never had that yeah, kind of family yeah. thing growing up with my mom. Yes. But I never saw like um, a partner be that sweet to their partner when I was growing up. So it's it's a kind of a new yeah, thing yeah. for me to to witness and be a part of, and it's it's beautiful, and that's that's all it takes. It just takes like a little tiny kindness. I think that we forget sometimes, and mm-hmm. I know you and I have talked about this a lot when we talk about my uh, raising the vibration dot org movement. It all it takes is right. a tiny bit of kindness to make such a bit of difference in the world, whether it's to a stranger it, it or is. to one of your best friends, and it it takes no extra effort to. Um, you know, to, to to just be just be kind, you know, and just send somebody something yeah. and tell them that you yeah. love them or, um, you know, I make sure when my niece, I'm with my niece, that I always tell her, like, how amazing I think she is and how she's my favorite child because I didn't have anybody like me when I was growing up. So I, if I had had, my mom had had somebody that was around all the time that was always like, hey, you're a rock star, kid, it would have been nice. I mean, not that my mom ever missed telling me, but you don't realize sometimes how little things fall on people in such a beautiful way. It does. You know, every morning um, when uh, Kebby gets up before I do, because I'm a late night person, and he'll get up and then I'll get up an hour or two later and I'll walk into the kitchen for my coffee and the first words out of his mouth are always, good morning, honey. Oh. Sets the tone for the whole day. Doesn't it? Yeah. You know, or even... Yeah, even if he's going off to work 
and I'm still lounging in bed, yeah. he still comes in that bedroom and he wakes me up to kiss me goodnight. Yep. 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 Do you know one mm-hmm. one time so when I was me goodbye, I should say, yeah. When I was really feeling it after my mother died, maybe a year after my mother died, I'd had the thing with my heart. I had lost my mother who was my heart because there are no accidents, right? And my best friend who's, Absolutely. you know, she's a Leo. She's not a gushy girl. She's not she's not gushy like me. She doesn't gush all over you the way that I do. Um she's she's a woman <laughs> of few words that she doesn't mean and and she doesn't uh she's lovely, but she's not, you know, she's not uh, effusive for no reason. And she sent me this email and it was just this lovely email about how important I was to her and I don't know that she'd ever spelled it out for me like that. And if she's listening, I'm going to put we're both going to die of embarrassment. But she said this thing she Aww. said that I'm so, you'll never know how proud I am of you that you've taken the worst part of your life and made something beautiful out of it. And I think to her, it was just being honest. But I have to tell you, every time yeah. I think I can't keep doing this service anymore, I'm knocking myself out, I can't, I can't carry on without my mother, I remember just that one sentence from her and it, it fixes yeah. everything. And that's why kindness is so important because it just takes sometimes somebody just needs to hear one thing and it fixes everything. And you're so amazing. Thank you. You truly are so Thank you, amazing. Friend. Thank you. I mean, it's a life of only of, of solely service. It's not for everybody, but it's a life that I love and I'm so glad that it's a path that I chose and, um, I know everything happens for a reason, but if I had it to do over again, I probably would do nothing different. But if I had it to do over again with hindsight, I would have done this at the get go out, out the gate and and just been in service my whole life. It's so beautiful. All right. We're going to get Nicole on with us okay. now. And then we are. Um, and then if you want to get on with us, send me a text message. 818-437-0886. That's 818-437-0886. And we will. Uh, we will do a little psychic readings, little energetic healing, spiritual counseling, whatever you like to call it, whatever makes you happy. Um, we will get it with you. And uh, uh, Nicole, welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? I'm good. How are y'all? Wonderful. It's great to hear your voice. Say hi to to Belle. And um, and what? Can, how may we help you? Hi, Belle. Okay, so I've been in transition. Oh gosh, for a while. Um, I'm looking for some direction with, um, the job. I started as, I still a, am a temp. I started eight months ago. It's supposed to be a short assignment, but they like me so much. They keep extending me nice. and, um, I'm looking forward to see, um, job opportunities for me. That's beautiful. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Bill, I'm going to let you start because you know what? You're lovely and you're my guest. Oh, thank you. Now, Nicole, where are you from? Because when y'all when you come out with hi y'all, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm in Texas. Beautiful. <laughs> I figured it had to be Texas somewhere. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm in North Carolina, so that's cool. When I, oh, when I okay. heard y'all, I perked right up. I was like, oh, Southern. Not that I don't like the Northern folks. Don't get me wrong, or the Midwestern folks. But now. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing that came to me, Nicole, I'm from Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's okay. That's north enough. <laughs> that's all northeast stuff. Um, when when you were talking about the temp work, the first thing that Spirit had stated was boundaries. In other words, they are quite content keeping you on as a temp because yes. they don't have to provide the benefits. Mm-hmm. The uh, the you know, the amenities that come from being what we would call a full-time employee with the company. And, um, and sometimes if you work through a temp agency, they're going to keep you that way because, let's face mm-hmm. it, they're making money off of you every month aside from what they're paying you uh, for your temp position. Yeah. So, and I know there's contractual things going on there as well where um, you can't, say to the to the business owner or the you know management people hey i want to get hired full time they have to make that offer and buy you out from the temp agency mm-hmm. but i think that i would need to set my boundaries with this agency and specify look i am looking for something full time permanent if you cannot provide that for me then i'm going to set out on my own and find it 
Yeah. And now here's okay. the thing. I know that you, you love what you're doing and you love the company you're doing it with. And so, and Spirit's using the term getting your feet wet. You're just getting your feet wet in this business or in this line of work. So I would love, love to see you talk to this team, to the, I guess it's the agency, because I don't think you're allowed to speak with management there and ask them to hire you, are you? Um, we've, we've had a couple of conversations. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and, but, but you need to, like I'm saying, be fierce, be, you know, put your foot down, set your boundaries. And let them know that um, that you definitely need to um, you definitely need to say, look, I'm looking for full time work. Help me out here. Mm -hmm. You know, and you talk to the people. Ooh. I guess it's hang on a second. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Um, but but you do definitely need to be able to um, state your boundaries. In other words, I'm not in this for temporary purposes i want a full-time permanent job and um and i need the benefits that that come with that so if you can't help me in providing that for me then i do need to go on and find something else and sweetheart and trust me it will be made available right and sweetheart this is a life lesson for you right i mean there are times where asserting yourself in this manner where you have to stand up to people and sort of tough up and put your armor mm -hmm. on this is this is something that is not is not your forte, right? It's not something that comes easy. You're more like a just a hard worker who show up every day and hope they just figure out you're wonderful and give you the job. But um, but but this is there's there's more than just the job at stake here. This is a lesson for you that you are worth it and that you have an enormous value, not only as um an employee uh in and in your career, but as a as a person. And that you don't need to apologize for who you are and you shouldn't have to ask for something. And if you have to say, yeah. look, this is who I am and this is what I deserve, that you're perfectly willing to do that and, and that that's okay with you. That's very important because there's a part of you that's like, no, 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 you, you take the last piece of chicken. I don't need it. You know what I mean? And that's, that's lovely. Yeah. That makes a lovely person. But it also sometimes in business, it harms you. I had a friend say to me once this wonderful thing. I always stuck with me. He was a former child actor, and he was talking about how, how he got gigs as a kid was anything they wanted him to be, that's what he would become. And anything they told him to do, mm -hmm. that's what he would do. And that's why when he was two, three, five, seven years old, he worked constantly. And he said to me once, I think we were like in our 40s, the early 40s at the time, and he said, you know, everything that served me well as a kid, as an actor, has not served me well in relationships because I'm a person who goes into relationships now and I'm like, whatever you want me to be, whatever you need me to do. And it's, I've wound up being a person who doesn't have a voice in my own relationships. And I never thought about it before until he said it. And I thought, oh my God, that's me too. So I think that some of us that are very gracious yeah. people that don't want to go in and barge in and, you know, be tough and be like an alpha female or an alpha male, we think, oh, I hate that behavior and I'm not going to be that person. But unfortunately, sometimes in business and sometimes, honestly, in life, in friendships, in relationships, you have to be the person that says, I'm worth this. This is what I'm worth. And here I am. Yeah, this is what I want. Yeah. You know, because we've always been taught that, that humility, you know what I mean? Be humble and, and <clears throat> other guy first and so on and so forth. But sometimes it's just downright okay to state your needs. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. And to feel good that about makes it. Sense. <laughs> yes, yes. And um, I do that for my children. It comes naturally. But for me, yes, I'm, yes, you can have the last piece. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> yep, exactly. And then you never, you never get your piece. And, and at some point, Absolutely. you know, you build up, either you start to build up resentments because you never get your piece. Or, or you start to crumble under all of that because you start to think, oh, well, my now my image of myself, the story I tell myself about me is that I'm the person who never gets to go first and I'm the person who never really gets what I want. And that's kind of a slippery slope, sweetheart, to a lot of unhappiness because we, we have yeah. to be okay. the person that, you know? Mm -hmm. So be mm -hmm. that person who smacks their hand and say, not today, I get the last <laughs> Not a day. 
<laughs> not today. <laughs> exactly. Not today. I want this job. And also, you, sweetheart, you have yeah. to believe that you are wonderful and terrific and qualified enough that if this isn't, if they say, eh, mwah, mwah, no, then you're like, okay, you know what? I, I can be the person no, who yeah. who can do something else, you know, and that's and that's okay. Yeah. And, and I'm going to say this too, Nicole. Um, and, you know, sometimes, you know, when I state um, a um, prediction, so mm. to speak, um, sometimes I say in my head, holy cow, what am I thinking? But when spirit says it, I have to repeat it. And knock on wood, nine times out of ten, it, it, it comes to fruition. But they're telling me that um, this month, August is the time. And that all you have to do is date. Mm. State to the universe, this is what I want. This is what I plan and and let the universe provide. I think you're going to have that this month. This month. Okay. Yeah. And I, so I can do all, that. It's I can do that. Tweaking, tweaking your actions. Okay. Yeah. In other words, do something just a little bit different than what you would normally do and see how it changes the energy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and and you know what? This I This is your time to shine. As much work as I have done on myself, um wow. you know what? It's it's I I I struggle with this too, sweetheart, all the time. I think really every empath struggles with this. Mhm. With this feeling of how much should I take and how much should I give and where's the gray area in between? I think that's a thing that all empaths struggle with. We love you, sweetheart, and we hope you're doing well. Please follow up with me and let me know how you're doing and stay in touch. I would love that. You have my info, and I will send anything out that you need. If you want to get on with us, 818-437-0886. That's my cell. Text me your name and your number, and I will get you on the list. Do you agree with that, Belle, that that's something that particularly that empaths struggle with, that we always try to find where the where that line is between giving too much and and making sure that we get what we need as as human beings. Yeah, that's very common with an empath because empaths go through the world um, on their emotions. You know, whereas we don't have the the, the sense and sensibility, we don't have the uh, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? We don't have the drive. Because we're so worried about what somebody else might feel, what somebody else is thinking, not thinking so much, but the emotions. We thrive on other people's emotions. Yeah. And that's how we go through through our, our world. And so the hard part is turning it in on you and saying, what are my emotions? Because we can't sometimes identify, Sheena. We can't. We have a hard time identifying what are my feelings and emotions and what are theirs. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And yeah. And also where do we, where do we fit in and and how much should we give? And because, you know, if I had my way, uh, you know, 20, 30, 40 year old me, Belle, um, I would give you everything like here, take this and you can have everything but the cat and my pride. Unfortunately, I did give my pride away to people too. But, um, but I've had to learn in my life that it, it doesn't serve the world for me to give everything away at the expense of me. Because if I become depleted, then I have nothing to share with anyone else. So I need time to recharge. And interestingly enough, a lot of my light worker friends, um, because this is Light Workers Unite here on the Sheena Metal Experience today, at we lightworkersunite.com, a lot of my light worker friends will say, um, oh, you know, you need to set more boundaries with your clients and you need to set office hours and you need to make people book in advance. And I probably need to make people pay more in advance. But because I do sometimes, there are some folks that I have to, I've, sometimes I wonder if I'm a bill collector. But, um, but the thing <laughs> is, is that I don't, I don't, it's not my clients that drain me. Honestly, I think it's when I go to work and I have and I have clients, I understand the boundaries of that relationship and I understand what kind of help they're there for. They're stating what kind of help they need and I don't find them depleting at all. Honestly, the most drain that I've been in my life is from personal relationships. And so um, I'm realizing that more than ever now that I have clients, 
I'm realizing how much of everybody's free psychic therapist I was for years as a friend and how much that circle often never times came back when I needed something. So is never times even a word? Never came back, never ever came back when, when I needed something. And um, never times, it's the cause, <laughs> never and often times put together. <laughs> So I'm really learning my own boundaries for how much is too much to give and learning that a friendship is not you're available 24 seven to listen to everyone's problems. And when you have a problem, no one answers their phone. That's not, that's, that's a client that doesn't pay you. So, um, uh, you know, it's really been a beautiful thing for me opening my spiritual practice and realizing adjustments that need to be made in my own life. Does that make sense? Yeah, perfect. It makes perfect sense, you know, and, um, and, and sometimes, you know, it's okay to be selfish. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny cause I, people always think it's my clients that drain me. Oh, it's you know, your clients, you're seeing too many clients. And I'm like, actually, no, my clients are great. And let me tell you something. I don't have office hours. Like if you got to call me at eight in the morning and I'm up, I'll take your call. If you've got to call me at two in the morning yeah. and I'm up, I will take your call. Like if you are in crisis and you need me. I will take your call. I will read for you in the car while I drive from one place to another. I will read from you on my yep. breaks here at LA Talk Radio. Like, if you need me, I'm there for you because I believe that's part of service. But I have learned in my life that service and friendship are not the same thing. That if you're just being in service to your friends 24 7 and nothing ever comes back recipro reciprocally, that's a word, right? Reciprocally. Um, that's, that, that's not, um, that's not really a friendship. So it's been a wonderful learning lesson for me about, you know, where my boundaries are. And that's, I think everybody goes through that. And, and I think we, I think we've all done that, Sheena. I think we have all, um, traveled that route and, um, and then we have to come to the actualization that, Hey, you know what? I'm not doing myself any favors, nor are you teaching your clients any favors exactly you understand? yeah yes you're not teaching them and so therefore you know they continue to be um or need you as the crutch sure so it's kind of like taking a horse to you know leading them to water but you can't make it drink absolutely you know it's that kind of that same sort of concept yeah but you Isn't know it? and as i said honestly with me with clients I have hardly had a single problem with me. The problem was all with, yeah. with people that I called friends and that were actually yeah. clients that just weren't clients. Because if your friendship with somebody, it, it, you know, if, if, the, if the essence of your friendship with someone is whenever you're falling apart, you call them. But then if they need something, you're gone. <laughs> that's not really a friendship. That's a free therapist. <laughs> So I, I, you know, just like oh, I yeah. said at one point yeah. in my early 40s after I got out of this very toxic relationship that I no longer would rescue anything that weighed over 15 pounds. I think my thing is now <laughs> I'll be your friend or, or I'll be your psychic therapist, but, I, but, uh, but it's not the same thing. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not just a free therapist. I'm, you know, I, I'm not like Lucy from Peanuts. I'm taking my shingle down <laughs> because a friendship should be, take give and take and i think a lot of my clients that are empaths like you said i'm showing them by example if this is what a friendship yeah. is this person's not your friend so you have to um there has to be some kind of give and take for it to be called a friendship okay yeah, we're gonna get has to be the boundary absolutely we're gonna get christy on with us now and uh if you want to get on with us you can send me a text message with me and the wonderful reverend bell salisbury 818-437-0886 that's 818- Four three seven zero eight eight six. The link Hello. is going up everywhere on Facebook. Christy, welcome to the show. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. How are you? Wonderful. Say hi to Belle, and how may we help you? I just wanted to call and say you, the two ladies were wonderful. Y'all mm -hmm. helped me through our becoming who I am. Aww. You know, getting through some of the, the just the crap of being an empath and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's hard, right? It is. I'm looking forward to the class on. I'm sorry. You, you know what I learned at Beyond Christy was that um, you know sometimes we pick up so many um, vibes that we, that, like I said earlier, we get confused as to which really is mine and which is theirs. And I've learned 
to be able to say to myself, if these feelings are not my own, then leave me. Mm. That's so true. I like that. I ask myself all the time if they're my feelings that I'm feeling. If it's just something yeah. out of the blue, like all of a sudden I feel mad or I'm sad, it, I have to ask myself, does, is this mine and why do I feel this way? Yeah. 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 With me, it's sometimes, I, um, I'm pretty sure when I'm mad, it's me. <laughs> but um, sometimes when I feel overwhelmed, I realize. We just talked about this last night on uh, my Raising the Vibration show. Um, on Monday nights now, sometimes I do call-ins with a topic. And we were talking about the state of the world and, and, our, and our country, for those of us that live in America, and the United States of America. And I think that a lot of us are realizing that we're feeling a lot of people's worry and angst and fret. We're just feeling that general haze of it that's covering, covering the earth and our country like an energetic ozone layer. And we don't even necessarily know that we're, that we're, that we're feeling it. But we're getting all of this energetic um, input from social media and from the news and from, you know, sitting in a coffee shop and listening to people talk about how freaked out they are about everything. And, and we're picking that up as empaths without knowing that we're doing it. And then it's just a matter mm -hmm. of how do we filter out what doesn't belong to us. And um, my class that I'm teaching Friday night, are you going to be in the class, Christy? Yes. You're a rock star. Christy, I'm going to be there. Christy was at my seminar that I taught in Dallas, Belle. And uh, when I taught this workshop oh, for the wonderful. first time called Why Do I Feel Everything? And now we're doing it as a webinar on Friday night at 6 o'clock Pacific. And anybody who wants to take part, uh, go to whydoifeeleverything.com to sign up. And it's about an hour and a half. And we'll do questions afterwards. And uh, it's going to be fun. And I, Belle, I, bought, I, I got a swanky new step and repeat. Actually, a client got it for me because clients are wonderful. So thank you, Martha. Oh, yeah. And um, it's got the Raising the Vibration logo all over it like bricks in the background. It's lavender. And I'll be, it'll be making its <laughs> debut on Friday night for the class. And um, slowly but surely, I'm going to set up this little swanky studio area in my back room so that it's not just me sitting on my bed with the disgruntled cat, which is how we do it now. Yeah. You know what I did? Not I was good. thinking when you were talking, when you were talking about, um, you know, uh, how we interact with people and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I, I tend to be, and I'm not saying this proudly, but I tend to be, you know, a bit of a road rage personality. I remember that. Yes. Yep. Uh -huh. You're a rager, Belle. I am, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and so uh, I remember uh, a couple days ago, we went to the store at, at Walmart. We, you know, my brother gets his weekly shopping, and, and we went to Walmart, and it was crowded because, you know, everybody's gotten paid and whatnot, and I'm in a hurry because I've got better things to do. And so I'm sitting there, and this lady is blocking the road, and she's not going anywhere, and I'm like, hello, you know, move over, do something so people can get by, you know. And so I <laughs> impatiently blew my horn at her. <laughs> Mimi, get out of the way, you know. And I see her throw up her hands, you know. And then as I leaned over and looked, she was actually waiting for a car to back out. Oh, no. And I didn't see that. I didn't see that. So then... You know, just so happens a couple of cars past that spot was another person waiting to back out. So I thought I would wait for that spot. So I had the opportunity when this lady had parked, she and her, her I, I would say it was her grandson, um, they got out of the car. I rolled down my window and I said, <laughs> ma'am. And I know she thought, oh, oh well, here's God. this white woman who's going to come after me. <laughs> it's and that I crazy said, white bitch. <laughs> yeah, and I said, I am so sorry for blowing my horn at you. I said, I didn't realize you were waiting for a vehicle, and I just need to apologize to you. I'm so sorry. Her mouth dropped, and she looked at me, and she goes, oh, honey, it's okay. She goes, you have a good time. Yeah, you sometimes. Know, you go shop and have a fun time. And I said, yeah. you too, sweetie. And it ended up being a better situation. Isn't that beautiful? Sometimes people just need, you just need you know, a, a little kindness again, right? A little kindness. Yeah, I just goes a far away these days. Yep. 
Yeah, own own your your actions. You know how how you know humbling it was for me to say you know, and I purposely waited so I could speak to her when she got out of her car. And I know she was taking her time because she yeah. saw my car sitting there. And I'm sure she thought that lady is going to beat me up. Yep, she's <laughs> like, know? this is a, this is that and, nut. Um, that nut is is waiting yeah, for me. That crazy lady who blew her horn at me. You know? Yeah. And uh, but for me to have said to her, I am so sorry. I felt I felt like this renewed her faith in the world. I think that's beautiful. I'm glad you did that. I think that's wonderful. We need to do that. I Sometimes do. you just have I to say, you better. know what? I acted like kind of a douche, and I'm so sorry. I mean, it's it's I did. It's uh, it's part of yeah. life, right? I mean, and and it's not you. I mean, I say that that Bell, your example is wonderful for everybody, right? Sometimes you all just need to say, "Wow, that was not great." Yeah, that was exactly. not becoming of me. Yeah. And there have been yeah. times when I've accidentally cut someone off or something because I wasn't thinking and I was in my head for whatever reason and, and they've honked at me and then I've kind of mouthed, I'm so sorry, and waved at them. And then even if they flip me off and yeah. drive away, I think, well, you know, okay, I, try, I tried to be kind. That's all, you, that's all you can do. That's all you can do. Um, you know, I was in, the, um, I was in a store um, when my knees were really bad and I had to walk over to um they were i got in the line of course there was 20 people in the line and then this girl opened up a, a lane a couple over and said next customer in line and and she waved at me and said why don't you come because my knees were bad and i had my cane and i hobbled over there and just as i got there these three young girls cut me off and got right in front of me and if by then oh, there was goodness. a line and I thought, oh, great, now there's going to be a line, and I have to wait in a longer line. I should have stayed the line I was in. And this woman who ha probably was in her early 80s and looked like she could barely stand up, she said, you know what, sweetie, you go in front of me because you need to go. And first I thought, oh, good God, how bad do I look? And then I thought, you know <laughs> what, she has every reason to need to go first, but she's going to let me go. And you know what, I took her up on it because that's how much pain I was in thanked her like five times yeah. she was like no 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 don't worry about it the three in front of me have some lessons to learn about um taking what my mama used to call taking your half right out of the middle but you know this lady who obviously was also old you know, also in pain and much much older mm -hmm. than me you know it's it's um but but yet let me go because she could tell somebody needed help and i think that you have to focus on those kind of beautiful things you know yeah, you, you yeah. can't spend your time focusing on the bad stuff. Absolutely, it just keeps you in a gray, dark place. Absolutely true. So, so absolutely true. Uh, did you have a, a question for us, Christy? No, I just wanted to say that you ladies were lovely. Oh, aren't you sweet? Oh, aren't you beautiful? <laughs> well, yeah. so are you. That energy that you put out there is inspiring, because I'm sure inspired. You know, and uh, gosh, thank you. Yeah, and you know what? I love your, uh, Christy made me a box that she brought me in um, in Dallas. And it says, uh, uh, live, laugh, love on it. And it's so beautiful. Oh, and yeah. I keep I keep treasures in it. I keep, I keep spiritual treasures in it, Christy. Well, that's awesome. And I'm still working on the design for the box for the I'm yeah. Raising Your Vibration. That's right, for RaisingTheVibration.org. Uh, Christy's going to make a, a, a box, that uh, a special box that we can, uh, we can sell on our site that's just for, that just has the vibration logo and is like a pretty purple color and it's going to be beautiful. I'm, I'm so, so excited. So everybody can have their own sacred treasure box. Awesome. And, awesome. And I've I'm almost got a guy that's gonna work make me a website. So good for I'll you. have that soon, hopefully. Good for you, sweetie, because your stuff is so beautiful and you deserve it. And uh I for one am so proud of you and I know that Bell is is too. And um and I met you because of Bell, so that's a beautiful thing. And just another great connection you've made for me, Bell. Oh, thank you. Isn't that wonderful? We we hang with some of the most awesome people, don't we? We sure do. So tell me a little, tell everybody a little bit about Psychic Lighthouse while I get some more callers lined up here. Sure, um, Psychic Lighthouse is a Facebook group uh, that was started roughly about a little over a year ago, and well, maybe it's going on two years in January, I guess. 
Um, but anyway, uh, it's a it's a gathering for people who are teachers or seekers, mm. either or. You're teachers mm-hmm. or seekers, and this is for folks that um, have something to share. And um, for folks that have something they want to learn or better understand, and um, we all come together without judgment. We all come together with support, and and this group truly emanates love. It truly Mm -hmm. emanates this beautiful love energy. They're supportive. If somebody comes out and says, oh, I want to try my, my luck at doing readings, and well, I've never done this before, and I'm scared to death, and Maybe I'm not going to be the greatest. You've got people in there that are going, great job, even though you um, stammered a little bit. And even though you were a little rusty, you know, everybody is encouraging you. And that's what I love about this group. These folks here are just amazing, yeah, and, amazing people. And so many of them have become my crew for my live um I am raising your vibration and Haunted Playground After Dark yeah. videos from my bed because after you go to sleep, Bell, then they all move over to the West yeah. Coast and hang and party with me. <laughs> well, so, there you go, you party hardy people. They're night owls. I mean, sometimes I do want it like yeah. 10 o'clock at night here, and I'm like, it's 1 o'clock on the East Coast, and they're all still up and wanting to do it. So if they want to do it, I'm happy to do it. it. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. But the love and the encouragement that comes through um, the Psychic Lighthouse is just, you know, heartwarming. And uh, and if you're interested, you know, am, is it okay if I share the link? Please. Oh, my God. Please. Yeah. yeah. Um, just go to facebook.com forward slash groups and then Psychic Lighthouse. It's beautiful. It is not the Psychic Lighthouse. Don't put the in there because that belongs to somebody else. Oh, does it? Um, so which. Yeah, somebody out of Greece, I believe it was, started the group. I think it was after we did, I believe, because I remember doing the search when I started, yeah. and nobody had Psychic Lighthouse, and then all of a sudden, the Psychic Lighthouse um, emerged, but they're out of Greece. And I figured, hey, you know what, there's plenty of us. So don't. What you can tell is ours, because we have a spiral lighthouse awesome. as the image. You know, it's, it's interesting how... Um uh how first of all it's such a friendly place and i think that's so beautiful um not not all of the spiritual groups are and you know i have a a a new i have a client who's a budding psychic and um he sent me something um a couple of weeks ago about how he had been working on this site and sort of helping people out with readings and sort of feeling his way through it and then suddenly he kind of got this very cold email and was told you know we don't want you anymore and he was so hurt and i said you know when i first started doing way back remember bell when i started doing my moon prayers way back in the psychic yeah. stone age and i still do every full moon every new moon i will say your prayers send them to me it doesn't cost anybody anything it's a thing i do just for give back and I was putting it up on, you know, maybe a hundred Facebook groups. Facebook was always putting me in jail, though. And I <laughs> got some of the meanest and rudest emails from people. And then really? I would click on their group and their group would be called like Empaths for Peace and Universal Light for All. And like, where where is the universal light here? So the thing I love yeah. about Psychic Lighthouse is it really is a place that is embracing of people. It is not a place where there are 75 rules about how you probably don't belong and we really don't want you. And and some of these groups, it's like, are we going to spread love or are we going to not spread love? And and I'm not saying yeah. that nobody and should have only, rules because sometimes you have to have yeah, rules. My but only, Yeah, my only rule is this. Don't join my group and then um, spread your business around in my group. In other words, don't go into my group and post all about your business in your website and your fan pages and whatnot and never say another word in the group. Yeah. To me, that's trolling the group. Yeah. And uh, you'll find the exit door very quickly, you know. But if you're coming in and you're participating and you are encouraging others and whatnot, then we want you there. But if you're just coming to troll uh, well, then we're not going to have you stay long. You know, we yeah. want those of you, we, and I encourage you to share your business. Do I not? I mean, I encourage the people, share your business, 
share what you do, but the idea is to share. In other words, reach out in the group and offer, you know, uh, a, a live meeting or a live uh, event, you know, um, do something as a participant of the group. Yeah. And you're going to get along. We're all going to get along fine. But if you're just coming in because you want to troll the group and, and take members, then, you know, then, then we might have a little issue with you. Yeah. I hope Does I, that I, sound mean? No, it sounds no, good. And I, it just, as you're boundaries. saying it, Belle, I'm thinking, God, I hope I'm there giving enough. You know, I get so busy. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely you are. Okay. I mean, you're always praying, you know, your, your posts every new moon and every uh, yeah. full moon and stuff are enlightening and they're heartwarming because sometimes a person comes in, sweetheart, and they don't know where to turn yeah. and they're too afraid to, to reach out and say, hey, I need help. Yeah. But then here comes Sheena who says, I'm going to pray for you during this event. And you just email me and you tell me. Do you know how many people see that as a godsend? I'm so glad. That makes me very, very happy, sweetheart. That makes me super, yeah, super, you're super an happy. answer to a prayer to some, to many people, you know, that don't know how to ask or they're afraid yeah. to come off needy. So they're not going to say anything at all but suffer in silence. Yeah. And sometimes that's where we have to be aware. Thank you, sweetheart. Yeah, I, I do everything that I can to... I'm just doing as much as I can to give back. And I'm, I'm really loving it. I mean, there's so many, so many wonderful people. I mean, even my class on Friday night, it's like $20. Like, I try to keep everything yeah. as low as I can, keep my readings as low as I can, because I would rather, somebody asked me, one of my clients asked me the other day, a friend of ours who's also a very gifted light worker, and he said, well, you know, how come, how come he charges like this much money and you charge that much money? And I said, well, because a lot of people would rather do five readings a week for a certain amount of money than do 50 readings a week for another amount of money. But at my core, at the base of me, I am basically a minister. I mean, if you ask me what I am right now, I'll tell you, I'm a minister. And everything I do is my ministry. So the most I can help people for as little as I possibly can, I would rather do put in the extra hours and do the more time because I want to make sure more people get taken care of. And if I was if I was independently wealthy, I would not charge for anything because I would help everybody Absolutely. for nothing. But um Absolutely. You know, if there were This is our business. This is how right. we support ourselves. If I met if I you met know? my Mary Magdalene and I could just travel around and do my ministry and somebody else would pay for it, then it would be free for everybody yes. and I would grab all my friends yes. and we would walk from town to town and heal lepers. But that's not, you know, how there it works. So so, um, yeah. yeah, so, you know, but, but I think it's everybody who does their own thing. Everybody has a different approach to their light working and, and that's my approach. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. That's our story and we're <laughs> sticking to it. Absolutely. Um, so, um, we're going to get Maureen on with us now and, um, let's get her with us and, uh, and then if you want to get on with us. All you have to do is send me a text message, 818-437-0886. That's 818-437-0886. And I haven't even done one dumb thing today because I had Joy Cough on earlier, so I had everybody on the phone. And there's always one moment where I accidentally hang up on my original, on my guest to get the callers in. And I haven't even done it once today, Belle. I feel like the universe is smiling upon me. And it's a beautiful day. So we're going to get Maureen on with us. And then I'm gonna... so <laughs> it doesn't take a whole lot to make me happy. That's uh, you'll look, you've, I know you probably already learned that about me. Maureen, welcome to the show. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good. It's so weird to actually be on this end and not just watching. Oh, it's, well, it's great to have you. Do you can, sweetie, can, we're having trouble hearing you're coming in kind of loud and, and out there. How's that? That's way better. Thank you. Good. It's trying okay. to balance your levels and Bell's levels. And, you know, I'm, I'm also a radio engineer. I got all kinds of hats I wear. It's so wonderful to have you here. Um, is it a trip to be on the show after you've watched? Oh, it is. It is. And then I'm listening to everyone else and I'm going, oh, I got a question about that. Oh, wait a minute. I got to say something about that. Dang it. I need to just meet Shane live and just go sit in the studio. <laughs> oh, I love that. So where where are you at in the country, sweetheart? Um, right now we're in Seven Oaks, Texas. 
where okay. in, in the 18 wheeler it's probably why it's loud oh okay where, oh nice where, where do you um oh yeah this 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 little light of mine shining all over texas and louisiana spreading the love oh i love that where, where are you based uh, we're based out of the company we work for is based out of uh, Indiana, but we're we what they call us the I ten Cowboys because we stay generally in Texas and Louisiana every now and then Oklahoma Missouri. Okay, do you have a place that you live, or do you basically live on the road? <clears throat> uh, we're home four days a month in Plaquemine, Louisiana, south oh, of Baton Rouge. Wow. Okay. My back. My backyard is literally Bayou Jacob, and yes, I have a pet alligator named Lily. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> You're not messing around. But she's, she, she's gotten a little too used to us feeding her, I guess, and she's, it, it, no, she's too close for comfort. She ran us up the bank yesterday. That is fantastic. I, I think, um, I think <laughs> Belle, she's got you beat on southernness. Yes, you yes do, I, got, I might have her a little too. beat. I think you got Bell beat. I've never felt like more of a Yankee than I do right this very minute. <laughs> we still love you. I'm so glad. Well, well, you know what? I got to tell you, I'm a granddaughter of the South. My mom is from Kentucky. And I know when you're from the way down, you don't necessarily think Kentucky's the South. But I always say, when you go 10 minutes out of town and there's a frog leg shack, you're in the South. Yeah. If, they sell, if they're selling frog legs, you're seller. Exactly. So, so how may we help you, my friend? What, what's on your mind? Um, I've been like, well, as you know, I just recently came into the spiritual awakening. I recently had the veil lifted. I've been working an awful lot on trying to cleanse my chakras. Okay. And being this, oh, an epic empath and not realizing it for years, I've held on to so much. I had severe anger issues. Now I understand listening to y'all in the classes and, and other light workers that those emotions that I had extreme anger issues. I would wake up in the morning and I would want to kill everyone in the house. Oh, wow. The kid, dogs, it didn't, it didn't matter. Don't look at me. Don't talk to me. Every other word out of my mouth was the F-bomb. Oh. It was horrible. Yeah. Now, you know, that little tingling feeling in the top of your head that drops those notes and information is, has explained to me that it was the ex's emotions that I was channeling through, because obviously with him being a narcissist, he doesn't take blame for anything. Mm, okay. I'm, I'm, glad, you, I'm glad, you said, my, glad you said the N-word so I didn't have to. Right. Oh, severe. He's still at it. Oh, mm, three years later, and he still sees me when I'm happy and has to start a pot. Wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, I, I shut him down. I just threw a whole bunch of truths at him. You know what? It's it's an you interesting know, I, thing with the um, with the with the narcissist and the empath is an interesting relationship. And the thing is, that he will never they'll never totally be gone because. They always try to come back, but you just have to... I always tell this joke, how do you get a narcissist to go away? And then I say, oh, it's a trick question. They never go away. You have to go away. And that's that's really what yep. it is. You have to, you know, starve the starve the narc, starve the dark, and just cut them out and stop entertaining them. Right? The only reason I even try to maintain contact... I don't maintain contact with him. I try to maintain contact with our two kids, our two sons. Sure. Because it was a very nasty... It was a very nasty divorce, and they chose to live with their dad because he's, he's a spoiler or whatever. <laughs> I, it's a long story. He's a manipulator. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, yeah. Yeah, well, his favorite thing was to tell my tell my boys, you don't have to listen to that crazy bitch. Oh, okay, all right. Oh since they were like, since they were like in diapers, wow. they, you know. And then as they as they got older, I saw them failing in school. So of course, I'm the mom. I'm going to take away your video games. You are going to practice your handwriting. You are going to do these things for six weeks. When I see improvement, you can have it back. As soon as I go leave out to go to work, because of course he didn't have a job. Right, right, of course. You know, so as soon as I as soon as I leave out for work, here's your video game, son, go play. Yeah. And now the 13-year-old, you can ask him, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, I ain't doing nothing but sleeping all day and collecting my disability. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then the 11-year-old says, oh, as soon as I turn 18, I'm going to the military. I want to be a sniper. Okay. Well, you so know I'm what? I'm like, well... 
they'll grow out of that. They'll they'll grow out of being. I'm a, hoping. They'll grow out of it, sweetheart. Yeah. Yes, and and you need to claim. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping, you know. You need I to. I hope cl- they come around. You know, the, the relationship is really jagged right now, but I have faith yeah, they'll come around so eventually. Bell. Yeah, even so, they have chosen to, you know, to live with Dad. Um, there's still there's still part of you there too. Yes. There's still your teaching. Oh, yeah. There's still that part of you that is um, very predominant in their lives, and they need that, yeah. and they look to that. And it seems yeah, like, you know, they're, they're patterning a lot after their dad, but when they realize that that's no longer working for them, um, I think that they're going to be like, you know, Mama always said, you know, life is like a Thank you for that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep, they're going exactly. to fall back on what you were teaching them. <laughs> and so it's not for, yep. it's not for, it's not lost. Yeah. How does right. Spirit say it? It's not for not. Does that sound right? It's not for not. Yeah. Yep, that's it. It's not yeah. for not. Yeah, my mama used to say, my Scorpio mama used to say, life is like a box of chocolates, mostly full of nuts. <laughs> well, well, half of mine have melted and they stole the good ones. <laughs> so how can we help you, sweetheart? Uh, it was there any, let's see, trying to release those hemmed up emotionally. Every time I go to work on my heart chakra, I'm not even two seconds into meditation and I'm bawling crying. But I have no idea what I'm trying to face. And I don't think it's the kids because I face that every day. You, you know what I think is going on there, Sweet Pie, is, is the fact that you're blocking the tears. Mm-hmm. So when you're trying to focus, when you're trying to you know, tap in with himself, you, you start crying and then you go like, oh, oh, I can't be doing this. I must be doing something wrong. But that's how we relate. Right. That's how we get to the nitty gritty of what's going on is by letting the tears flow and by feeling, you know, so you're, you're absolutely doing it right. There, there's nothing that you're doing incorrectly at all. I just feel as though, um, uh, that, that you I'm were, stopping myself short. Yeah, you've got to own those feelings, own those emotions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I and, agree. And I think that when you're able to do that, I think you'll lose a lot of that anger that tends to be welling up inside, you know, because... Oh, yeah, it's like, it's like anger is my default setting. I mean, if I trip over yeah. a Coke can, I, my whole day is ruined. And it really affects my current relationship because he can't stand to see me unhappy in any way. Do you know what it's like, sweetheart? It's like, it's like when you keep, when you keep putting a bandaid over something, but you never really fix the wound. So the infection is down deep and you're just covering up the surface and it fixes it. It makes it better, but it's not really fixing it. So when you get angry because you kick a Coke can, you trip on a Coke can, that's because there's all this welled up anger from that relationship that you have not dealt with. And um, it's just festering down there. And you need to, first of all, you need to take a big old spiritual laxative and purge a lot of that out of all of your chakras. And then you need to sit down and really have a heart to heart with who you are as an empath. And this is a time when for everybody listening who's an empath, I will again promote my empath class, why do I feel everything.com. Because once you realize, really realize who you are, you'll learn how to put up filters and how to put up screens so that you don't take so much in and you release what you do bring in. Because you're holding on to everything. You're just like a, you know, like you're like the dead sea. I'm a spiritual sponge. Yeah, and you're not letting anything go. Yeah. yeah. So everything yeah. is stuck in there like a rancid lake where the water never moves. And you're not letting anything go, sweetheart. You need to let it go. Have either one of you ladies ever seen the episode of Avatar where they discuss chakras? Because if we just flash through my head, that's exactly how yeah. the guru explained it. It's like oh, it's like yeah. pool on, on a stream. And if there's something in between, you can't let that flow and it'll never get released. Yeah. It, it'll just build and get nasty. It's all about... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's like fishing in the water I with a that. net, right? You put the net in the water, you catch what you want to catch, and everything flows out of the net. That's really what it's about, sweetheart. And um, 
And for everybody listening who feels the same way that Maureen does, and we love you, Maureen, and we appreciate the call, and who is an empath, honestly, um, I think you're going to love this class because you're just going to learn a little bit about, um, about what it feels like to be like us, like empaths, and, and how to live with it and be happy. And I, I always start the class out by saying, um, you know, um, congratulations, you're an empath, and my condolences, you're an empath, because it is a lot to deal with. <laughs> but once you learn how to deal with it, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. And we appreciate your call, sweetheart, yeah. and we're thinking about you, and we just want you to do well. And uh, flush that relationship out, honey. Just There's so much going on. It's, it's spiritual douche time because sometimes you just have to keep flushing out um, the residual effects of being in a relationship like that. I'm still doing it with mine, and it's been you know a while. It's been a while, and I'm still doing it with mine because every once in a while I'll think, man, I'm still angry from being so so hurt and so abused so it takes a while yeah. to wash that narcissist out it's not like it's not like the it's like the 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 shampoo when we were kids to get rid of the lice but you have to do it a lot right bell bell are you with me still yeah i'm still here oh yeah. okay i yeah. said i said right right bell it's like the it's like the lice shampoo oh i'm sorry it it, it i couldn't hear it all the way through and then um and then I heard right bell, and then and then it went quiet, and I'm like, oh, am I, I supposed to talk I now? I said getting rid of a narcissist is like that shampoo they'd give us for lice when we were kids, but you have to do it a lot of times, oh. a whole lot of times. Yeah, no kidding, no kidding. You, you right? Good luck getting rid of that. Exactly. Just keep just keep using the lice shampoo. Janet, welcome to the show. How are you, my friend? I'm good. How are you? Thank you. It's so great to uh, to hear your voice and say hi to Bell. And how may we help you? Hi, Belle. How are you? Um, hi. Hi. Um, yeah, I was just calling in. I'm not sure. Um, calling in to say hi. Oh, hi. Do you do you have a question for us? <laughs> a psychic question or something um, we can help you with in your own life? Um, just in my personal life and the direction that I'm going in my love life. Okay, cool. Belle, I'm going to let you handle this. You're my guest. All right. So, and, and what was your first name, sweetie? My name is Janet. 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 Okay, good. Janet. <laughs> it makes me think of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Absolutely. <laughs> Damn it, Janet. Yeah. yeah, I've heard that my whole yeah, life. Yeah. I've never seen it, but I've always <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, so the first thing I feel is I do feel like that you are in a relationship already, correct? Um. Well, I just met somebody. We've okay. just been dating for about a month or so. So it's not. Yeah. 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 It isn't official. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think it is. <laughs> it is for you, for just, sure. <laughs> yeah. Just because it, it is coming through that way. And I know this is so new and let's don't jump the gun, you know, um, being able to. Uh, just get really get to know each other and, and choose that you like each other or not. You know, I, I always, when I counsel couples, I always see the same pattern that they may love each other very much, but they don't like each other very much. Mm -hmm. You know, so well, it's, 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 a, it's really, go ahead. Yeah, recently I just, I just started dating him, but like recently, um, I have, I'm also still friends with my ex fiance and he recently, uh -huh. like out of the blue, um, kind of the, almost the same day that like I talked about being exclusively mm. dating this person, yep. he called me and like wanted to start things over again. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of left me a little bit confused. Yeah, that's yeah. a soul tie, my friend. Do you know what a soul tie is? Uh, no. Bell, Bell, may I? Um, a soul tie is, oh, is, is, is when you have a relationship with somebody at home when you're not here in soul school. And then usually every lifetime you run into them to play out some kind of a connection. When you meet somebody and you just know mm -hmm. you know them. When you have a soul tie, there's a, there's a real energetic cord that runs between you from like your solar plexus chakra to your solar plexus chakra. Uh -huh. And um, yeah. oftentimes something will happen like that. Like 
somebody will go away because they want to go sow their wild oats. But then the minute they can tell you're interested in somebody else, they miraculously yeah. just show up again. And that's show that right soul touch. Again. He always knows this. Like yeah. I've, we've been separated for like five or six years, but it's like the only other time that I've been in with in a relationship that he like shows up again, like every of time. Of course. Of course, but yeah. he can't get it's it like, together. I don't want you, but I don't want somebody else. Exactly, to want you. but he can't yeah. get it together <laughs> enough, honey, to make the relationship go right. I'm sorry. I didn't yeah, I, I, I said he can't get it together <laughs> enough to make the relationship go. Yeah, yeah. And that's but, that's so, yeah, us. Cause my confusion because this new person, I kind of, I actually like him, which is. I haven't liked anybody in a long time, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you are picky for a good reason, but you're very picky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you should be. You should be. But, but see, this, and the, one of the first things, number one, I always tell this to people, spirit will never tell you what to do. Mm. They, they just won't because they will not step in and take away your free will. So mm-hmm. just, just so we are clear on that. But they can show me things that I don't mind blabbing, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know. So um, the, the, one of the first things that Spirit said when you mentioned that the ex was coming back into the picture, Spirit's first response was, you know, we call them ex for a reason. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My mama used they to say. They are called an ex for a reason. My mama used to say there's an ex on the poison bottle for a reason. Oh, oh yeah. there you go. True. <laughs> yeah, because um, I feel like that this this fiance, even though you were fiance, uh, I I feel as though it was in name only, <clears throat> because I don't feel like he really had any rightful intentions of getting married, because he was still busy sowing his own oat. Yep, oat sower. You know, yeah. I, not that I want to say that yeah. he was cheating on you, but he sure wasn't being all that faithful. Yeah, he was not the greatest. No, person. yes. <laughs> yeah, and so just as, as I want to say, just remind yourself, think back why you broke up to begin with, mm-hmm. and don't yeah. forget that mm-hmm. this is why he's the ex. And just you know, and it doesn't mean you have to be ugly. I mean, let's don't burn bridges, you know, because there is mm-hmm. that connection. Once you love somebody, it's there. You can't get rid of it. You know, it's just it's always going to be there. It's always going to be a part of you. But you can certainly, my grandbaby's calling me, you can Uh certainly uh, be very firm with him and say, you know, I appreciate that you wish to work things out with me, but right now um, I'm just not emotionally capable of handling that. Yeah, yeah. You know, or whatever your excuse is, just say, thank you, no thank you. Yeah, and be super friendly, sweetie. Like, you know, I'm always going to love you, but it just... It just doesn't yeah. seem like it would be any different and it would work. And I'm, I'm just not interested in going back there. Yeah, this is my past. And I, I appreciate that you are a part of that past. Mm-hmm. But um, move on, fella. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, cause I think the one that you're seeing right now is, um, hey, Papa, mm-hmm. can you call Blakey? He just tried to call me. Okay. Um, so, but yeah, it, it's, it's the fellow that you're with right now is a keeper. Yeah. And he's oh. a very nice guy. And interestingly, so he doesn't come with a lot of baggage. Mm. That's a oh, rare. That's <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's great. You know, I mean, we may have exes, you know, heaven, heavens to yeah. Betsy. If we don't, then, you know, we're not living, you know, but, um, but he doesn't hold on to a lot of stuff. You that's know what good. I mean? He's really good at, at setting things free. Mm-hmm. 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 You know, and, and, and it's not like he just, you know, is unfeeling or uncaring, but just that he he does this so well. Yeah. Well, that's good. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah. He's, a, he's a keeper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's, he's definitely a keeper. Yeah, and you, honey, have to make sure that with this new relationship that that you don't allow you don't allow the things that you've taken with you from the past relationship to become like your new normal. You know, sometimes when we're in a situation yeah, that's dysfunctional where the ex comes back and tries to come back and comes back around, that becomes like what you know. 
And it's hard to break out of that pattern. It's scary. It's easy to just go back to the same old thing that probably isn't going to work out because that's what you know. But 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 your but yeah. your path and your universal lesson specifically, all of ours, you know, generally and yours specifically is to break out of that pattern and take a chance on something that isn't familiar to you so that you can soar. Does that make sense? Yes, a lot. That's super thank important, you. my friend. Super important. We appreciate you, and we thank you for the call. And um, and we just want you to be fantastic and be well. Stay in touch and let us know how it goes with the new person, because I know that uh, that Bell is particularly She's interested in that. Bell, you're a you're very uh, blunt with your relationship stuff. You're like right in with the go for it. You're like a relationship yeah. rallier. I love that about you. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's like, you know, um, if it ain't working, you know, if it don't, don't keep trying to put a round peg in a square hole. Yeah. It just isn't going to fit. But don't you think it does? And this guy just, yeah, just right away, the guide was like, no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go back. (laughs) Mine too. No, don't go back. Don't go back. Universe was screaming. No. Yeah, it's yeah. Ju- it's just you a know, soul it's, it's tie that control thing on his part. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, we're gonna get Serafina on with us now. We're just cranking through these, Bell. <gasps> just uh, having fun. Yes. I'm so glad you're here with me, my friend. This is fun. Uh, I know well, this took us a while to get connected, but I'm glad we did. So glad we did, Serafina. Oh, welcome. How are okay. you, my friend? Yeah. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, say hi to <laughs> Belle, and how may we help you? Um, I'm just, you know, what, um, any, well, I, uh, I'm hoping I will attract love soon. I haven't had a relationship in a really long time. Okay. Or, mm-hmm. or career or anything. <laughs> I mean, like whatever you pick up. Make sure you want to attract love and attract career. Attract something. Just attract something. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm just kind of like getting. I'm. I'm. I'm at a new start right now in my life. So um, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. It's a good start. You're in yeah, a it's huge a, it's transition. It's about time. Yes. <laughs> it's about time because I, I am going to say this. You know, when you said that you hadn't been able to attract love, um, the, the, right away, spirit said. That's because you didn't want to. Mm. Because oh. you know, sometimes when we are picking the wrong type of people, we yes. pick, we we tend to pick when we're not ready yeah. emotionally. We pick people who are unavailable. Yep. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. and then we are trying to force that you know in our own mind that this person mm-hmm. oh that you are making excuses like the you know and I hate this pinpoint, point but sometimes when women pick a married man right. You know, you have yeah. to ask yourself, why are you always falling in love with somebody who's never, they're never going to leave their spouse. Everyone yeah. of them has got the story. You know what I mean? They're not right. going to leave. They just want their cake and eat it too. Yeah, exactly. And so we have to be able to look at reality. Yeah. But, and, and in uh-huh. your case, you know, and, and you, your name is Serafina? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. How beautiful is that? It uh-huh. sounds so angelic to me. Yes. <laughs> it just sounds it doesn't roll off Thank the tongue you. like an angel's voice. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> but in so so anyway, so for you, Spirit right away had said you hadn't found somebody yet because you really didn't want somebody yet. You know, you are um you're very picky. I mentioned that to another client earlier on the phone, but <laughs> you are extremely picky. And you've got mm-hmm. standards. Mm-hmm. And right Well, I finally, <laughs> I finally do. I finally do. Yeah, because it's like you're saying to yourself, they got to have a job. They got to have yeah. hair. Because for you, Serafina, they. Oh that's my important. God, that is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> they got to have hair. That's fantastic. <laughs> oh my heads, gosh. Begin to speak, yes. You know, but not yes. too much hair. Spirit said you're not going to have it going down the back because that is a. Oh. a so, so, <laughs> <laughs> How funny are you? <laughs> but, yeah, I love your guides. They're so funny. Um, oh. Excuse me. But, you know, so you have standards, and that's good. That's good. You know, it doesn't mm-hmm. make you shallow. It doesn't make you uh, less than. It's just that it, it is what it is. You know what you like. So go for it. Mm-hmm. Choose what you yeah. like and, and go for that. And so, and sometimes, 
Um, it's simply a matter of saying, hey, universe, hey, God, mm-hmm. I'm ready. Yeah. Bring it on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm ready for love. And also speak and, up. And then be careful what you ask for because it's going to be right there. And oh, I will okay. add for, for you specifically, um, coming the holidays comes also with it a beautiful, lovely romance. Okay. Oh, nice. Um, oh, <clears throat> what yeah. holiday? And, and, <laughs> and, well, I'm, I feel more like, like November, December time frame. That type, oh, of, that type okay. of um, time frame for me is around the holidays. You have somebody to, and you do enjoy doting on a man. Gentlemen, listen up because this is important. Serafina, <laughs> you love doting on your man. You love, I, I love what? you love, oh, yes, taking I do. care of them, you know, mm-hmm. and so, and that's important. And, and mm-hmm. any man that, that is able to get your attention is going to be mm-hmm. on top of the world. He is going to be so <laughs> full and so happy because you are that doting, loving personality. And mm-hmm. so, you know, don't change what you do. Don't change how you uh, love your man, you know, because mm-hmm. that's important. But just mm-hmm. most definitely... You know, um, let the universe know you're ready because it, it, before yeah. I can I can hear it so clearly. You were saying, you know, I someday, someday I think I want right. somebody in my life. Someday, right? But not right now. I'm 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 still working on me, or I'm yeah. You know, there were all these excuses, and you right. just weren't quite ready. Mm. You just weren't ready. So yeah. the universe is saying, oh, oh well, okay. I mean, if you're not ready, then. We'll hold off on this mm-hmm. wonderful, fabulous man, you know. But okay. now, Spirit says, all you have to do is state your claim. Mm. I'm ready. Oh, wow. Bring it on. Mm. <clears throat> oh, that's and that awesome. Is what, mm-hmm. But honestly, by, by the holidays, sweetie, I do feel very strongly that you will be in a beautiful and very caring relationship. And I'm oh, even nice. going to go so far as to add that, now, you know how I said you have standards? Um, uh-huh. and you really do. And they are high standards. And just mm-hmm. so you know, this wonderful fellow is one who does like to dote on his woman with mm-hmm. lavish gifts. Oh, my just gosh. Saying. That's awesome. <laughs> just saying. You know, because you, you awesome. love those things. Yeah, you enjoy yeah. Those, those treats. And it's been and very so, long. <laughs> yes, and you deserve that. You absolutely mm-hmm. deserve that. And so, you know, put out, you know what I, I always did um, mm-hmm. before I met my hubby? You probably heard us talking earlier about my relationship with hubby. Before I met mm-hmm. my hubby, I would write a letter to my angels. And I would oh. say to the loved angels. <clears throat> and I would specify what I was looking for. And it always Uh seemed to say, I want a man who loves me as much as I love him. Uh Uh-huh. Because I was used to these one-sided relationships. You know, I was was deeply in love and the other ones were like, yeah, yeah, okay. You know? Uh Uh-huh. But I love you too, sweetheart. Good night, buddy. Oh. You got it. Have Uh a good night, sweetheart. Uh My little brother going Uh to bed. Night, buddy. <laughs> you know, so um, write a letter to your angels, and just I always addressed it to the love angels, and I would oh, say, okay. I, my heart is ready to be in love. My heart is ready to fall in love with the right person for me, mm, not just yeah. anybody. The right person for me, and then specify mm-hmm. what it is you're looking for. He's got to have a job. Mm-hmm. Got to have hair on his head. No hair on the back. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know. Um, and I'm also right. going to add to this fellow. I don't know if he. Um, I don't, why are they showing me this? But I guess it's going to be a clue. I, I don't know uh-huh. if it's because he actually shaves his legs or he just doesn't have hairy legs. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> just, just that, one is of those so that, that is yeah, so strange. That is strange. He doesn't have that that hairy leg. You know what I mean? So um, I wonder why they would show his, you that. Because they have a weird know, right? sense of humor. Sometimes I guess it's got to yeah. be... Such a the, weird um, sense of humor sometimes. The, but here's your <laughs> sign, you know? Yeah. <laughs> How do I know? Oh, my oh, God. Oh, hairy legs. 
Uh, only <laughs> hair on the head, only hair on the head. <laughs> and none on the legs. Oh, well, that's great. No. <laughs> and you know, sweetheart, you're going through such a huge transition right now. And oftentimes when we're going through a transition where we're saying to ourselves, I am no longer going to accept any less than what I want. Sometimes there's right. a dry spell in there because universe almost makes you kind of walk your talk. Like, are you sure? Can you uh-huh. handle the dry spell? Because that's where the lesson uh-huh. is. And then what's beyond that is you break through into something much more beautiful and much different. You know, so you have yeah. to, you have to sometimes yeah. there's always, it takes a lot of courage to say no, if it's not going to be about, it if it's not going to be in my best interest, I don't want it anymore. Mm-hmm. And you've really done Absolutely. that, sweetheart. And, and stop saying that, um, you know, that you don't, you don't want anybody. Stop saying that because now you do. Yeah. Okay. And that's a beautiful I thing. Do. You are yeah. ready yeah. for love and state what yeah. you want and be grateful for it. Yep. And it's coming, baby. Mm-hmm. You just got to keep those standards up and keep believing. And we love you and we love that you called in and keep us posted and let us know how you're doing. And uh, thank you so much for the call. And, and we, we can't wait to hear the story about when the hairless man comes in. The hairless man, oh, Bell. You are so adorable. The hairless man is coming. All right, we're going to get Shelly on with us now. Yeah. Um, I love that you saw the hairless man. Well, you no, know, he'll have hair on his head. Yeah, he's but he's got to have hair on the head. Body that's hairless. A, that's a criteria. He's body hairless. But, but he doesn't have the hair on his mm-hmm. legs. And that is the craziest thing. Like, what? And he doesn't have like but a, like hey, a long as mullet. They show it. I love that they were like, no, he doesn't have long hair down his back. Like, so obviously he doesn't have a mullet, which is always good to know. Shelly, welcome to the show. How are you, my friend? (laughs) Hi, Gina. How are you? Say hi to Joy, and how may we help you? Um, Hi, Joy. I'm wondering. Hi, Joy. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm wondering if I can get some insight on my romantic life. Because that's always my issue. Oh, this is oh, sweet. all about the love tonight. Belle is the, and Belle is the <clears> love mistress. The She's love. amazing. I know. It sounds like you guys see. are answering a lot of my questions, actually. Like, as you go through these other readings, it's amazing how Isn't that, it all you know applies. what? That is yeah. so crazy because yeah. it works like that. Yeah. And it, it works yeah. like that. It's like you may not get on and you may not get a reading, but listen, because spirit is giving the, the messages are coming, whether they're directed at you or at the the, the person who's you know getting the reading. <clears throat> if it fits, claim it. Mm-hmm. Yes, and oftentimes, but, so um, yeah, there's a theme to the night where all the people in the night tend to want the same questions <laughs> answered. Each show has its own yeah, theme. Yeah. Sometimes, very interesting. So, um, yeah. we um, have a theme. So, Belle, I'm gonna let you go for it because you've been the love psychic. I'm gonna let you just handle this. <laughs> um, so, okay, so say your first name for me again. My name is Shelly. Shelly, okay, wonderful. So, um, looking at love. Now, did you, are, have you, I, I want to say recently, and the only reason I'm saying that is because you might have left a, a love relationship um, a little while ago. But it feels like although you left, you didn't leave it. Do you yes, understand absolutely. what I mean by that? Um, left because it feels like you were st- just recently signed papers to divorce. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because I felt like there was still that connection or that hold yeah. somewhat. And um, and and boy, I tell you, sweetheart, this was a very unhealthy connection. And yeah. and I feel as though and, you know we always like to blame narcissism on um on our exes and because it just sounds so good but um and i'm not really convinced that he is of the narcissistic personality aside from the fact that he was just downright selfish well this, but, <laughs> yeah. is, but isn't that <laughs> that might not be a narcissist but that is a narcissistic person right it is it's a personality trait but it doesn't, I don't think he has the full narcissism. Yeah. Uh, I think that he is more along the lines of just, you know, a selfish person. Yeah. And he wanted what he wanted when he wanted it. And um, it, it just could be very, um, well, his mouth could use a lesson, you know, just, just put yeah. it that way. His mouth could just use a lesson because he would say some very, really hurtful things, you know, shame yeah. on him for that. But. You know, those things will come. (laughs) Yeah. 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 
but you know, it'll, it'll come back on him, you know, but, um, uh, so, so let's, let's leave the past in the past done, finished over with, because I felt like there was something holding you and that's part of why I couldn't take you forward. And, and I have to admit that for you, you know, baby girl, this, this was a standard that's a part of you, you know, cause it was like, almost like in your mind, I'm still married, but I'm still yeah. married. You know, it was that standard and I have to admire that in you, um, because that's kind of like a lost standard nowadays. It's like, okay, so let's move on. Who's next? You know, and, and, but you were all about the weight and, and taking yeah. things slowly. You know what I mean? Cause, and, and I have to be honest with you. It was almost as if you were saying, well, what if he chooses to come back? You, you know, I feel yeah, like there I, was a part of you that was holding out. Yeah. You understand that? Yeah. 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 And, um, but thank goodness you, you didn't hold out for that because, you know, you didn't need him. You, you, you truly, you know, um, the spirit just said, think of it as taking the trash out, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, so, okay. Okay. So, um, so now I'm asking spirit, I'm having these two conversations in my head. Don't we understand now why they used to lock us up back in the day? Oh. <clears throat> Because oh, we have all these conversations going on uh, in our yeah. heads, all these voices talking to us. Back in the day. <laughs> no wonder. No I, wonder. I think it still happens um, in some places. Yeah. Um, I, I do feel like, I, I kind of feel like there is a, an interest, but maybe it hasn't been a connection yet. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Like you've sort of had your eye on somebody, but we haven't made a major connection yet or... I, and, you know, you are kind of a shy person in a roundabout way. Yeah, you very know, shy. You're not a buddy. Yeah, and and it's it, it, this sounds crazy, Shelley, but it's almost like you like somebody until they find out that you like them, and then you don't like them anymore. No, no, I don't like you. I don't like you. <laughs> you know, it's like I don't I don't know how to explain it. Does that make sense? Like. Because it feels like that you would like somebody at a distance, but as soon as they find out, you're like, well, you still do like them, but you're afraid to acknowledge it. Yeah. Like you're afraid to admit it, you in, know? In a way, and, sweetheart, and there was start. another guy that I liked, and um, the minute I signed divorce papers, because he never wanted to date me because I was married, um, the minute yeah. I signed divorce papers, he didn't want to talk to me anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, he just thought it would be fun to play yeah, around with somebody a who was... scoundrel. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so what a rotten scoundrel he is. I mean, I think but, really, um, sweetheart, that this is a time for you to learn to fall in love with yourself. I know that's hard, yeah. but I, yeah. I want you to realize, to see you the way that Belle and I see you and to realize that you're enough so that then you can turn around and find somebody who can match your energy who's also enough, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally agree. And, and I will say this, they're going to come for you. You don't have to go after them. You know what I mean? You don't need to be the aggressor. Um, the, this fellow I feel is, um, what I term the old fashioned kind of guy, you know, he wants to be the one to, to ask you out. He wants to be the one to be the gentleman, you know, these aggressive women today scared the bejesus out of him, <laughs> you know, the, the one that I see you with it, the, it scares him because mm -hmm. he's like, holy cow, what happened to, you know, letting me be the, you know, the pursuer. You know, because he's an old-fashioned kind of guy. Not that you're an old girl, you know, but he's just an old-fashioned kind of person that this is, you know, this is what good men do. And let him, let him be the pursuer. Now, um, when when I look at you as far as my concerns, of course, are when are you going to be in that coupled relationship? Mm -hmm. The feeling I get here is early on in the coming year. And okay. now understand that doesn't mean that you don't meet him until then. That means that that's when you are in an official relationship. Okay. Yep. In other words, we are mm -hmm. announcing our intent to be a couple. Wow. You know, so you could be together, you know, um, and, and trying it out, you know, long before. But I feel as uh -huh. though by the time we get you, and I'm going to say about March of this coming year, um, that's when I feel that you will be in that, that loving and caring relationship. But I feel like that you're still in the process of taking your time. Mm. Like you're not rushing anything. 
and and that's a good thing. It is a good that's thing. You know what, ladies? We are so completely out of time. Shelly, we love you and we wish you the best. Thank you for the call. Um, sorry to have to rush everybody, but I'm actually doing another show in 10 minutes because that's my fourth Ooh, show of nice. the day. I do four shows on Tuesday and I'm going to go home tonight and do Delicious. one live from my all bed. Right. So, uh, Bell, you are wonderful. Keep thank you for being Shelley. here. Thank you for all, uh, to all the callers and Bell, thank you to you. And where can we find you online and how can people find out about Bell Esprit and Psychic Lighthouse? Well, I am on Facebook as Bell Salisbury. I also have a fan page, Bell Salisbury Psychic Medium. Yay. And my website is bellsalisbury.com. And um, also, I'm offering a mediumship course. It just started this past Sunday, but it's not too late to join in. And you can learn more about the mediumship course by messaging me on Facebook or go to my website. Check it out. Wonderful. Thank you, my friend. I love you, and I appreciate you being here. You are the best. Everybody, let's hear it for Belle for being a wonderful light worker today. She's amazing. If you're looking for me, um, I am raising your vibration.com, SheenaMetalSpiritual.com. That's my practice. My uh, online webinar I'm teaching on Friday night, August 9th, 6 o'clock Pacific time, WhyDoIFeelEverything.com. Please sign up, MPES. It will change your life. Um, also, uh, my movement of peace, love, kindness, and unity, raisingthevibration.org, and I am raising thevibration.com. I have two wonderful spiritual web series, we are living with the dead.com and we are altered.com. That's with an A, like an altar in a church. Also, Saturday Night Spiritual, that's my interfaith service at the Founders MCC Church, where I am a staff pastor. Next show is sept- uh, next service is September 14th. At 7 o'clock, Saturday, September 14th, please come and take part in that. If you're not in the L.A. area, we broadcast all over the world, which is beautiful. Um, Many exciting things coming up. Send me an email, Sheena at IamRaisingYourVibration.com. Text me, 818-437-0886. Feel free to do both of those things. And then, of course, also, SheenaMetalExperience.com for this show, LATalkRadio.com. It's the Sheena Metal Experience at LA Talk Radio. You know what happens here. We rip the veil off the human side show every Monday through Friday, 5 to 7 p.m., and expose those big old homo sapiens at their most bizarre, some days at their most beautiful every single day. And you know it's my show, and that's true, my friends. It is indeed my show, but what it really is, always and forever, it's your experience. Thanks for listening. Have a great night, and we'll see you all tomorrow right here on LA Talk Radio. And go to welightworkersunite.com to see more broadcasts like this. I love you all. Irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to L.A. Talk Radio.